Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we cross-examined Gumshoe for a bit. We didn't really get too much. And now we're going to go ahead and cross-examine Ben and Trilloquist. Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge, I mean clown. Clown, you're talking about Mo. Of course I'm talking about that old fart. He's so pathetic I can't stand him. Just a little bit of exercise and his makeup is running all over the place. Once practice was over, he was nine-tenths of the way to kneeling, o kneeling over for good. Poor guy. We didn't have any choice, so Ben took him back to his room. When it comes to being the first place loser, that guy's ahead of the pack. Hmm. Then what happened? As so we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went over to the plaza. What did you do then? I went over to the plaza to do some thinking. It was awfully cold out that night, especially with all the snow around. Wouldn't thinking, wouldn't thinking in your nice warm lodging house have been a better idea? Mr. Phoenix Wright, I think you should leave the thinking to the witness. But I'm a good thunker. At least my teachers always said I was. When I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. Are you sure it was really Max Galactica? Of course I'm sure. How could you mistake somebody wearing such a snobby three-piece getup? Snobby three-piece getup. Get the wax out of your ears. Lawyers nowadays, you're like talking to a brick wall. Max's three-piece getup. Jeez, could you be any more dense? All together now. Silk hat, cloak, white roses. Thank you! Nick, I think you should put a little bit more effort into preparing your questions. So this is a statement you'll need to press. You saw Max and only Max, right Trillo? That's right! And that makes him the killer! There was only one person headed that way that night. Hmm, that makes quite a bit of sense, and that makes Max one suspicious character. There's more to this story than meets the eye. Is there something amiss in this? Let's ask, Ben only saw Max. That's a bit strange, don't you think? What's strange? That you only saw Max? Doesn't it seem like you should have seen someone else as well? What? Why are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Who else do you suppose this witness could have seen? Well, Russell Berry, of course. He was there since he was the victim. And that's the... victim. That's correct. Patrillo was at the entrance to the plaza. He should have seen the ringmaster as well. Ah! Obviously the ringmaster arrived at the scene of the crime before the witness could have seen him. Any one of his sense could have figured that one out. What are you talking about? The ringmaster and Max went together to the ringmaster's room. Is that according to the defendant? A likely story. If Maximilian Galactica was supposed to be in the ringmaster's room, why was he, just as the witness stated, at the scene of the crime? Ugh. I see. It seems that at this stage I have no reason to doubt the witness's testimony. And there are clearly no conclusive contradictions. He's right. A brilliant judgment, Your Honor. Now let's move along with this testimony. Hmm, Trillo wouldn't happen to have any ulterior motive for incriminating Max, would he? Well, Max is part of the bitter love triangle with Regina, which is probably why Max conked him over the head. Um, Nick, wasn't Ben the one who got knocked over the head? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't know anymore. As practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge, I mean clown. So last statement here, then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. Or then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. At what time did the police arrive at the scene? Hmm, I suppose that would have been around... Hey, what time was it? Huh? Um, I think it was around. I'd say a bit after 10.30pm, I think. Practice ended at 10pm, so you hung around the lodging house the entire time? I, 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 I guess that sounds about right. Wasn't it awfully cold? I can't believe you'd just stand outside in that weather. Well, uh, the truth is, 
Will you shut up, you big nose dope? Why are you telling him anything extra? Why can't you just believe that we stand outside in that weather? Well, maybe you were waiting for someone. What? Wh wh what? Who said we were waiting for someone? Mr. Phoenix Wright, we can all do without your off-handed series. But this witness is cracking under the pressure already. I'm on to something. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Who do you suppose the witness was waiting for out in the cold that night? Well, of course... Well, if he was waiting outside in the cold, it was for one person. One person only. He was waiting for the animal tamer, Regina. Wah! You were waiting outside for Regina to come back to the lodging house. Am I mistaken? Is this true? Well, I, um, can't really ask me that question. Who cares who I was waiting for that night? What's important is what I saw, don't you forget it. Well, well, well. This puppet may be a bit stiff, but he's right. Eh. Alright. There's obviously a reason why this witness was there that night. He spent all that time waiting for Regina to arrive. Moreover, even if someone else would have walked right in front of him, I doubt he would have paid them a second thought. Ah! That makes perfect sense. What did you just say? The witness saw the defendant as the scene of the crime. However, he did not see the victim on the way to his eventual demise. If you accept that, then you must accept that there's a high likelihood that... He could have missed someone else other than Max heading to the scene. Ow! There is absolutely no proof that the witness was waiting for the animal tamer. Um... Um... I guess you got me. Alright, alright, I'll spill the beans for real this time. It's true, I was waiting for Regina. Pain! Don't volunteer things. Mr. Quest, tell us the truth this time. And I mean the whole truth. Where are you... Were you or were you not waiting for Regina at the entrance to the lodging house? I was. I was waiting to propose to her. You were what? Waiting to propose? What's the matter? You think humans have a monopoly on marriage? That the matter of puppet marriage is not under review in this case. You're the judge. I mean, I mean, look at your horrible outfit. More pain. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks to your bumbling, my perfect plan is not so perfect anymore. Now the, now we have to waste time getting to the bottom of some silly proposal by a puppet. Don't be surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. I even had something to give to her. I kept it in my pocket waiting for the chance to propose and give it to her. Of course, I also had it in my pocket that night. It was a present for her. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to us, so I've still got it in my pocket. You were going to propose. You. A puppet. Don't be so obtuse. Just because I'm a puppet doesn't mean I can't love. I guess you're right. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I couldn't propose to her, too. No, Judge! Exactly! His honor is looking a little less honorable right now. Okay, Mr. Wright, please continue with your examination. <sighs> Aw, and did you hear that? His sigh seemed a little wistful. Don't be so surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. A proposal, you mean proposing marriage, correct? To Regina. Of course that's what I mean. What kind of stupid question is that? I wasn't going to propose that we became some sort of outlaw biker gang together. Right, Ben? Y yeah Got it? That's the truth. I even had something to give to her. What was it exactly that you planned on giving to her? You know exactly what I was going to give to her, numbskull. The only thing I could find that could match Regina's beauty. And so his question, what was it? You're gonna die when you hear this. It's an engagement ring. 
An engagement ring. Wow, those two nearly fell out of their chairs. Mr. Phoenix writes. Mr. Phoenix Wright's joke has gone too far. Time for this to end right here. Francisca's whip looks like it's about to lash out at almost anything. One hit from that thing will probably shut someone up for a long time. <laughs> I love how one of the options is pain equals bad. We're gonna push on anyway. Maybe something of a joke, but this is a historic moment. The first time that a puppet has ever proposed to a OW! I advise you to cut this argument short. I'm going to have to agree with the defense here. Will the witness please revise their testimony? Specifically about the engage engagement ring. I'd like to stick to the facts, not sociology. You sure do enjoy sweating the details, especially for a man in a bla black bathrobe. Planned on giving an engagement ring to Regina. An engagement ring? Uh huh. It's actually a diamond-shaped stone cut from glass. Even more brilliant than the real thing. I think Regina's going to love it. It's just a ring. What's the matter, Nick? Well, there's got to be something I can catch him on. I kept it in my pocket waiting for the chance to propose and give it to her. Whose pocket was, in, was the ring in? Mine, of course. What a stupid question. You've got to be kidding me. You think Ben could pull that off? I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> really? You don't have to apologize for that. He's the one who should be apologizing. Really? Of course, I also hid it in my pocket that night. It was it was a present for her. So you went to the lodging house to give it to her. That's right. I tried to give it to her during practice so many times that I lost count, but that uppity snob kept getting in the way. Uppity snob? He couldn't possibly be talking about me, Maximilian Galactica. When I get a hold of him, I'm gonna saw his wood block in half, and not with magic. Well, they always say that love creates rivalries. So what about this present? In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. So you're still thinking of giving it to Regina? Of course I am! I spent three months' salary on that thing. I'm not gonna give up that easy. Huh, I wonder how much he receives for appearing in the circus. Probably way more than he deserves. How about it, Nick? I think it's about time to unwrap this toy's testimony. That's the spirit, Nick. Give him heck. Uh-oh. The judge has that dazed look again. Maybe you should get out more. So the problem with this one is, first of all, first of all, you need to press the statement where he talked about the engagement ring. And if we go to the last statement here, it's like, I've still got it in my pocket. But if that's true, why do I have it? Objection. Trillo, do you mind if I show you something? What is it? What are you talking about? Uh-oh. Looks like they're going to double-team me now. Do you recognize this ring? Ah, that's... that's... that's mine! Give it back! Thief! Thief! Didn't you just testify about this very object? I believe you said, in the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. Why then do I have it right here? Ah! What is going on here? That's... that's... Ben, say something! <laughs> Don't put it on me... Don't put me on the spot like that, Trillo. I found this in Money's room. M m money's room? You mean a room they put money like a bank vault? Ha! That filthy monkey's gonna get what's coming to him. Mr. Quest, I would prefer if you avoided slandering innocent fiats in my court. Well, Your Honor, money really is a monkey. In every sense of the word. Ah, I see. Well then. Money likes to go after the shiniest things that he can find and gather them up. Shiny... things? Trillo, when was this ring stolen from you? Well, I suppose it was that time, you know, that night, the night of the crime. What did you just say? Details. I need more details. 
Well, it was stolen right after Max showed up in the plaza. Right about when you saw the defendant walk past, correct? Well, um, well, well, I guess you might, um, be able to say that. The ring might have, well, it could have been taken around that time. Uh, yeah! Oh. Ben, what's with you? Oh, whatever. It has nothing to do with anything, especially not who committed the moita. It's not for you to decide what it has to do with what. Now, Trillo, back to the topic at hand. I haven't admitted a thing. Not I, Mr. Trillo Quist. What did you do when the ring was taken, Trillo? You know exactly what I did. I chased after that ring snatching monkey money. But you weren't able to catch up with him, were you? It's all this slow, loafy fool called Ben's fault. While he's fumbling his way through the snow, that dumb monkey was able to get away. It is indeed an incredible shame. Well, this does indeed prove one very important point. Prove an important point? What point could that possibly be? Ben doesn't exercise enough! Uh, you could say that, but we have health on the line here, so let's just say Ben's testimony has a flaw. There's a huge contradiction in this witness's testimony. C contradiction The witness just testified to the following effect. Up until the police arrived, he didn't move from the entrance to the plaza. However, the witness just stated that he chased after Money the Monkey. When the witness was off chasing Money, there's no one watching the plaza. What is the meaning of all this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Where are you going with this little theory of yours? I'm saying that there is no possible way that this witness saw the plaza the entire time. That's where I'm going with this little theory, which leads me to my next point. It is entirely possible that someone other than the defendant was at the scene. Interesting, Mr. Wright. Well then, tell me this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Do you have any proof that something slipped past this vi vigilant ventriloquist? Well, he obviously didn't see the victim, the ringmaster, arrive at the scene. However, that doesn't change the fact that he saw the defendant arrive. The witness is lying. He's blindsided by his rivalry with Max. Well, the defense's argument does hold water. This witness does have a history of animosity towards the defendant. What? How dare ya? I wouldn't lie just to get that just to get that dark face in trouble. He's not even worth it. I saw him! No doubt about it. I saw that worthless liar. Well, just for clarity's sake, let's flesh out exactly who you saw that night. Hey, huh, I told you so many times you'd think you'd know. My story's not changing. You've already changed your story. St You've already changed your story, stick boy. Not, and I'm sure it'll change some more. When there's one lie, there are usually many more behind it. Exactly, Maya. That's why we have to keep after him. Yeah. You know what? I accidentally pressed A there, but we're going to go ahead and leave this ep this episode off here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and cross-examine Ben and Trillo once more, and hopefully get them off my screen. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!